Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's continued coverage of AWS reInvent. My name is Savannah Peterson and I am very excited to be joined by two brilliant blokes in the space of efficiency and performance, whether you're on-prem or in the cloud, today's discussion is going to be fascinating. Please welcome Brad and Simon to the show. How are you, Simon, coming in from the UK? How are you feeling? Very well, thank you, very well. Excellent, and Brad, we have you coming in from Seattle. How are you this morning? Doing fine, thank you. Excellent, and feeling bookish given your background. <laughs> Love that. I know that you both really care about efficiency and performance. It's a very hot topic, both of the show and in the industry right now. I'm curious, I'm gonna open it up with you, Simon. What challenges, and I think you've actually continued to tackle these throughout the course of your career, what challenges were you facing and wanting to solve when you started Yellow Dog? Um, really, we're just looking at cloud and coming from an on-premise environment, really want to be able to make accessing cloud, particularly a, a volume to be simple and straightforward. Um, if you look at today at the you know, number of instance types available from the major cloud providers, there's more than 7,000 different instance types. Whereas on-prem, you go along, you select your processes, you select your systems, it's already easy, really easy. When you hit the cloud, you've just got this amazing amount of choice. So really it was all about how can you make intelligent decisions for you know, where you're going to run your workload, how to match it with what you've got on-premise. And that was really the, the inspiration for Rafael uh, for Yellow Dog. So staying there for just a second, what does Yellow Dog provide customers? So Yellow Dog is, uh, is, is a SaaS system. So um, it, you, you get it by accessing through the Yellow platform. And what it allows people to do is to be able to make intelligent decisions about where to run their workload, whether that be on-premise or in the cloud. It has a wealth of information. It understands the cost, the performance, the latency, and the availability of every different, different instance type in all different clouds. It really allows people to move, uh, to be able to make use of that information, provision exactly what they need, and uh, to be able to run their workloads. You know, it also includes a, you know, a provisioner. It also includes a scheduler as well, which is a cloud native scheduler. So it's designed to be able to cope with, um, with cloud in terms of things like spots and interruptions and be able to, uh, to, to reschedule and uh, fail over between clouds if there's ever a need to do so. Yeah, that sounds incredible and i know this means a lot for partners like amd brad talk to me about the partnership and what this means for amd for your customers yeah absolutely it you know we're excited to be al uh, aligned with a uh, uh, with a company like yellow dog it's uh, it's um you know the the importance of compute is becoming more and more prevalent every day and it's it's always been top of mind but especially now when you think about what the uh what, what the economy and the rest of the world is kind of facing over the next you know, probably a year or longer, it's so important that, um, that you're able to maximize your dollars and your spend and, and doing away with, uh, with, uh, with absolute certainty that you've got the right type of people behind you, uh, ensuring that your, your dollars are being spent very wisely. And the great thing about Yellow Dog is that they have tremendous insight into, uh, into cost optimization and compute optimization across the entire globe. Their, their index is, is quite remarkable. And what it does is it allows uh, customers to actually see just how performant and cost efficient AMD is. So it allows us to really put our best foot forward and, and gives customers a chance to understand something that they probably weren't, uh, weren't familiar with, the fact that, uh, that AMD uh, is a tremendous, a tremendous value in the marketplace. Yeah, and, and uh, Simon, can you tell us a little bit more about the Yellow Dog Index? I'm glad you brought that up, Brad. Yes, yeah, so the Yellow Dog Index is, uh, is, is essentially, it's, it's live, it's available for anyone to access. You can just go to index.yellowdog.tech and you'll be able to see pretty much every single instance type that's available from all the major cloud providers and be able to make your selection. You know, are you looking for GPU type nodes? Are you looking for AMD processors? Are you looking just for, for performance? Essentially, what you're able to do is be able to get a live view of effectively what's available in different data centers around the world and the price at this moment in time. Also, just uh, as Brad mentioned, in terms of you know, cost efficiency and uh, being you know, taking you know, green values you know, as seriously as we, should, as we should do, the Yellow Log Index also has the ability to be able to see at that point in time where the best place to be able to run a job is 
based upon the lowest carbon impact of running at this moment in time. And that, uh, for many organizations, gives an amazing insight in not just about being able to find the, uh, the most you know, efficient processes, but being able to ensure that the greenest energy possible is powering that process when you want to be able to run your workload. It's so powerful what you just said. And I think when we, it, it, exactly, it's not just about it's not just about power, but it's about place when we are, are looking at global computing at scale. What I know that there's ESG advantages and, and ESG being a, a very hot topic when we're talking about uh, AMW on AWS and, and, and leveraging tools like Yellow Dog. What other sorts of advantages beyond being least carbon impactful can your mutual customers benefit from? So it's not, like I say, there's, there's many other features. You know, a, a very important thing when you're running a high performance computing workload is being able to match the instruction set that you're running on premise and then being able to use that in the cloud as well. And also to be able to make intelligent decisions of where should something run? Should, would something be more efficient um, to be run on premise? Should we always try and maximize our on premise resources before going into the cloud? So there's a lot about being able to just be able to make decisions. And, and Yellow Log itself, it makes thousands of decisions per second to be able to work out where the, the best and most optimized places to, to, to run your workload. Yeah, so Brad, you work with a lot of companies at scale. What type of scale is possible when leveraging technologies like AMD and Yellow Dog combined? Well, it, you know, I'm, I love the fact that uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, HPC, and, and it's one of the areas that actually is most exciting for, for me personally and for, and for AMD with the uh, combination of Yellow Dog and AWS. And AWS launched the very first uh, HPC uh, instance type last year and you know we're we're we haven't even begun to answer your question we haven't begun to see um the, the full scale capability in the cloud when it comes to these uh, these very coordinated and very refined workloads that are running at massive scale and and uh, you know we've got some some products will be launching in the near future as well that are incredibly performant and you know to be honest i don't think i don't think we have even come close to seeing the scale relative to some of these very optimized workloads in HPC uh, that, that we're capable of. So um, we're excited. We're excited for the next few years to see how, how we can wrap in um, some of the tremendous success that AMD has had on-prem in these, these, these massive compute centers and replicating that same success uh, inside AWS with companies like Yellow Dog. It's, uh, it, we're, we're excited to see what, uh, what's, what's going to come forward. Can you give us a preview of anything on the record that gets you really excited about the future? I was going to ask you what, what had you looking forward to 2023 and beyond. But nothing, well, not, nothing official, of course. Uh, but um, I will say this, you know, AMD has recently successfully had the launch for Genoa. Uh, it's our next, next gen uh, release. And it is, um, it is proving to be, it, it, it absolutely is the dominant compute engine at, at, at this point. Um, that exists, and you know, when you start to couple that with the the prowess of AWS, you know, you, you could see that over time becoming something potentially that um, you know um, can really start to change the compute landscape quite a bit. So we're hopeful that you know in the future we'll have something along those lines uh, with, with AWS and others, and um, we're very uh, we're very bullish in that area. Love it, uh, Simon. What about you? You've been passionate about low carbon IT for a long time. Is carbon neutral tech in our future? What I realize this is a bold and lofty claim for you, but feel free to give us any of your future predictions. Um, yes, yeah, so well, I, I started you know, trying to build uh, you know, solutions for you know, many years ago. In 2006, um, I was part of a team that launched the, the world's lowest powered Windows uh, PC. That was actually based on uh, AMD technology back then. So uh, you can tell that AMD have been working on, on low power for, uh, for a long time. In terms of carbon neutral, yes, I think um, certainly there's a, there's a few data centers around the world now that are uh, getting very close to, uh, to carbon neutral, some of which may, may have already achieved it. So that's really interesting. But um, you know, the, 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 the second part of that is really the, uh, the manufacture of everything that goes into those servers and systems and being able to, to get to uh, you know, a net zero on those over a period of time. And when we do that, which is you know, 
not without challenges, but, but certainly possible, then we really will have uh, you know, carbon neutral IT, which will be uh, a benefit to, 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 to everyone, you know, mankind itself. Yeah, <laughs> casual statement. And I have to say <laughs> that I wholeheartedly agree. I think that it's one of the greater challenges of our generation, especially is what we're able to do in HPC in particular, since we're talking about it is only gonna grow in scale and magnitude and the amount of data that we have to organize, sort and process is, is wild even today. So I love that. I'm curious, is there anything that you can share with us that's in the pipeline for Yellow Dog? Anything coming up in the future that's very exciting? Um, so we're coming up very soon. Um, we're going to release something called um, version four of Yellow Dog, which contains um, what we call a resource framework which is all about making sure you've got everything you need before you run a job, either on-prem or in the cloud. So that might be anything from making sure you've got the right licenses, making sure that your data is in all in the right location, making sure you've got all aspects of your workflow ready before you start launching compute and start really you know, burning through dollars um, with compute that could be potentially sat there, uh, not, not doing anything until other tasks keep, keep catch up. So we're really excited about this uh, new V4 release, which will, uh, which will come out very soon. Awesome. We can't wait to learn more about that, hopefully here again on the Cube. Brad, what do partnerships with companies like Yellow Dog mean for you and for the customers that you're able to serve yeah, it's, it's incredibly important. It's, you know, there, there's one of the, the difficulties in, in compute that we have today, especially in cloud computing, there's, there's so much available at this point. I mean, there was a point in time it was very simple and straightforward. It, it's not even close to being that any longer. And so, you know, I, one of the, the things I love about Yellow Dog themselves, it actually it, it does a great, they do a great job of making very complex situations and environments fairly simple to understand, especially from a business perspective. And so one of the things that we love about it is it, it actually helps our customers, you know, the AMD direct customers better understand how to properly use our technology and, and to get the most out of it. And so it's difficult for us to articulate that message because, you know, we are a semiconductor company. So sometimes it's a little tough to be able to articulate workloads and applications in the way that our, our customer base will be able to understand. But, you know, it's so, it's so critical to have companies like Yellow Dog in the middle that can actually, um, you know, make that translation for us directly to the customer. Um, you know, and, and especially too, when you start thinking about ESG and environmental relationships, you know, I'd like to make a comment. And one of the things that is fantastic about uh, AMD, AWS, and Yellow Dog, we all share the same mission and we're very public about those missions uh, about just being better to the, to the planet. And, um, you know, AMD has taken some very aggressive uh, targets through 2025, much beyond anything that the industry has expected. And, you know, because of that, we are, you know, we are the most, um, we are the most power efficient x86 product on the marketplace, and it's not even close. And, you know, I look forward to the day when, uh, you know, you start looking at instance types inside these public cloud providers in conjunction with the old dog, and, and you can actually even start to see maybe potentially what that carbon footprint is based on those decisions you make on compute. And, um, you know, considering that the, more than half the spend for everybody is generally compute in these environments, it's critical to really know what your true impact in the world is. And um, it's just one of the best parts about a partnership like this. Oh, what a wonderful note to close on. And I love both the synergy between all the partners on a technology level, but most importantly on a mission level, because none of it matters if we don't have a planet that we can continue to innovate on. So I'm, I'm really grateful that you're both here fighting the good fight, working together and also making a lot of information available for companies of all different sizes as they're navigating very complex decision trees in, in operating their stack. So thank you both, Simon and Brad. I really appreciate your time. It's been incredibly insightful. And thank you to our audience for tuning in to our continuing coverage of AWS reInvent here on theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, and I look forward to learning more with you soon.